Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, funding continues to come in to build higher ground communities one year after the flood. And the Lieutenant Governor pays a visit to Breathitt County to reflect and remember one year later. And very hot conditions continue as we head through the evening hours into tomorrow. Latest breakdown ahead as Mountain News fi at 5.30 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Dangerous heat is affecting parts of the region on the one year anniversary of the worst day in some people's lives. Team coverage of the flood anniversary begins in just a moment, but we want to check in first with First Alert Meteorologist Evan Hatter for a look at how this, how long this heat will be sticking around. Evan? Well, I can tell you, Steve, that today is not the only day. Obviously, yesterday we had the heat, and I think we'll be seeing plenty of it as we head into the day tomorrow. Now, a look outside on our first alert weather day will show you that we've actually dropped some counties from the heat advisory. You see Pike County, Floyd and Martin onto the west because we saw some showers and storms earlier drop the temperatures in that region. But for everybody else, until 10 o'clock, just about everybody else, Wayne and Logan counties in West Virginia under an excessive heat warning until 9 o'clock. Pinpoint Doppler shows a clean sweep all throughout the region. Hefty, hefty thunderstorms just outside of the area. We were talking about parts of the Big Sandy earlier, seeing plenty of thunderstorm activity. You see them moving on through. Better ingredients out to our east. That's where the warnings continue. That little outflow boundary just kind of didn't materialize any more storms. The view from our Pikeville Medical Center camera, 82 with that filtered sunshine. Whew, it's hot. 95 Manchester, London, Williamsburg and Jacksboro, 97 apiece in Harlan and Jonesville. Factor in those dew points in the low to mid 70s. Feels like 103 in London, 105 Somerset and 110 in Monticello. So we continue to see very, very hot temperatures as we head through the next 12 hours. Temperatures only slowly diminish into the 70s overnight. Steve, the latest on when we could see more storms and more heat in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Evan. Of course, it's been a year now since the devastation that struck many here in the mountains. 45 deaths have been attributed to last July's flood. One woman's body is still missing. The National Weather Service says more than 14 inches of rain fell on parts of eastern Kentucky during a five-day period at the end of last July. Many communities have felt the impact of the flood last year, and for one place in particular in Letcher County, that was certainly no different. Let's send it out to Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson, who's live in downtown Whitesburg with more. Brandon? Steve, it's been a hot day, but definitely a big change of pace from what was going on one year ago today. The North Fork of the Kentucky River behind me, a babbling brook right now, a raging river that broke and shattered records set back in the 57 flood back in this day one year ago today. Again, we've been hearing stories from so many folks that have been impacted by this event and how much better they're doing even now if the rebuilding still continues and we're going to continue to see that for a while and again the governor's been here today we've talked to some city leaders we've talked to all kinds of people and again it's all about resilience and recovery that's what they're focused on today and that's what they're going to be focused on for some time to come but a good the good news though even though it's been hot here all day long I think we're on the road to recovery here, and I'm hoping we're going to see that situation, of course, across the counties we're covering in the newscast tonight. And then, of course, don't forget about our special coming up at 7. Live in downtown Weinsburg, Brandon Robinson, and send it back to you, Steve. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. And as he was talking, we were showing you video from uh, Neon, just one of many communities affected there in Letcher County. After the flood, funding for new higher ground communities began pouring into the region. WYMT's Jordan Mullen spoke to officials about how these sites for new homes will help families affected by last year's flood. Recovery efforts began shortly after the waters receded last July. Of the many needs that were presented, housing was one of the most critical. Across eastern Kentucky, funding started pouring into counties to build new homes on higher ground. Here in eastern Kentucky, we're a family, and we want to keep our family close, and these, uh, uh, these communities are going to help with investments in infrastructure and investments in keeping our families safe, and most importantly, keeping our families here at home. For families in Breathitt, Perry, Letcher, Knott, and now Floyd County, officials say these new affordable homes 
will be something they can be proud of. It's not housing that these folks can't afford. It's affordable housing that we're going to put these people in and a place that they, they will be proud of and a place that we're going to be proud of to put them in. And something they deserve. Uh, every site is critical because every family deserves that forever home. And they deserve one outside of the floodplain where they never have to go through the trauma of knowing where they're going to survive, where their kids or parents going to make it out. What about their neighbors? What about everything they've worked for decades? Cities, counties, and an entire commonwealth working together. You're, you're just starting to see the beginning of how we work together with counties and cities to get that available flat land, how we use the different grant programs to build out the infrastructure to it. To ensure no one is left behind. Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Governor Bashir says breaking ground for many of these communities has not happened yet, but some homes are tentatively scheduled to be finished this fall. And just today, the governor announced a second high ground community in Knott County along Chestnut Ridge Drive near Soft Shell. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman visited Breathitt County today, another very hard hit county. Coleman joined local officials and flood survivors in remembering the lives lost there. WYMT's Keaton Hall joins us live from Jackson with more. Keaton. That's right, Steve. The Lieutenant Governor offering her support and sympathy to flood survivors here in Jackson on the anniversary of one of the worst disasters we've ever seen in the mountains. Nine names read aloud. And my friends, Nancy Compton, 29, Ellen Campbell, the Beaver Dam. She's Remembering the nine lives lost in Breathitt County last year during the flood. So not only do we remember these nine names, but we remember all of those. All of those people that are still out there. All of their families. All of those who daily are missing a piece of their heart. Breathitt County officials and flood survivors joining Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman Friday in honoring their memories and supporting their families. And so to have those folks be able to come together and know that their community is still standing by them, I think means a lot. Local officials also taking time to acknowledge the work that's been done and the work that remains. You know, re recovery is a process. It, it's in, in the beginning, there's a lot of help. There's a lot of people flooding in. There's aid coming from different places and different people. And then things start to tell off. With more work left to do, the lieutenant governor promising her and the governor will be there for all of it. You know, earlier I said that today is a mile marker. It doesn't represent a finish line. Uh, there, there has been so much progress that has been made. There's so much loss that's been experienced. And there's so much more work to do. And it's, it's a, it's a and although there is a lot of work left to do here in the county, steps are being taken to improve the quality of life. Earlier this month, Governor Bashir announcing $1.3 million going to improving roads and housing in the county. In Jackson, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. All right, Keaton, thank you very much. We're told Breathitt County lost more than 700 homes and 150 roads were damaged in that county alone during the flood. On this day of remembrance, we not only think about the destruction, but the way in which many Eastern Kentuckians were forced to build back. State Senate President Robert Stivers reflected on the work done from within the state, from the legislature to the local level and even the private sector. Um, so from everything within the state borders of Kentucky, I think everybody did a really good job under the circumstances that were, I'm going to keep using this word, harsh. While there was also help provided by FEMA, Stiver says FEMA was tragically slow, unorganized, and did not do the people of Eastern Kentucky justice in the roles they had. The most deaths last July, 22, occurred in Knott County. Last night, a monument was dedicated in their memory. Today, WYMT's Olivia Calfe spent some time in that county in a few different locations. She's live at the Mine Made Adventure Park for us tonight. Olivia. Thank you, Steve. The Moving Mountains event just kicked off a few minutes ago at 530. And since it's just getting started up here at Mine Made Adventure Park, I want to take you all to Hindman 
where I had the chance to sit down with the cowboy who cares or some of you may know him as Cowboy Dave. He was here shortly after the flood and he's back. I got to see him in action as he was spreading joy downtown and I sat down and talked to him about why it was so important to be here one year later. Boom! A year ago, you're gonna make it. Everybody has that place that it could be college, it could be a ball field memory, it might be an interaction with family. And for me, it, it, this disaster here, because of the makeup of it, because of the people, and learning the difference between hillbillies and, and mountain people and colors. I fell in love with uh, people that came here late at night and, and shared what it's like to not be able to get to your own family because you're pulling somebody else out. And for those of you who may not know Cowboy Dave, he travels across the country to various disasters, standing along the road as he did in Hindman or next to wherever the disaster happened. He cheers people on and he always has an ear to listen. I sat down and had a wonderful conversation with him today. It's certainly people like him that have made a huge impact on this disaster. But I will be back here in just a little bit. So for now, I'm live in Knott County. Olivia Kelfie, now back to you. Olivia, thank you, I'm sure, for many folks that have come in from across the country. Eastern Kentucky has certainly left a big impression on them. Uh, many people are still recovering in Heinemann, and some people have not even moved back into their permanent homes yet. Local officials there say the recovery will be measured in years. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on the efforts to return to a normal way of life. It is a clear, shallow, and calm creek on this July day. The creek was, was probably 30 foot higher, plus right here where we're, where we're standing up out of the bank. A year ago, it was a deadly river of destruction, causing loss, anguish, and pain. It's something that, uh, uh, you know, little children, I don't think, uh, will, will ever forget. The judge know. executive Jeff Dobson says progress is being made. One of the biggest is this bridge off Kentucky 550. And this bridge here is the only way in and the only way out for these only folks. Way. Only way in and out, yes, sir. The bridge was washed out, leaving families trapped. It took several months and nearly a million see, dollars yeah. to replace it. Jim he laid the law. man took it upon himself to build a temporary six, way out. You know, that's the type of people that we have here in Eastern Kentucky for the most part. Uh, folks, uh, you know, they're, they want help, they need help, but they're not going to solely depend on that. A lot of people simply don't want to talk about what happened a year ago. I spoke with one man just outside of the city of Heinemann, and he says that he's just now been able to move back into his home. That's pretty much the same case in this house where the finishing touches are being put on the inside. That was one of the most horrible things that I have ever experienced in my life. Claudette Presenda has spent an entire year and nearly everything she has to move back in. My daughter's 20 and he's, my son's 18 and they still traumatized by the, they still get scared. Rebuilding and a recovery that is measured in years, but mentally, maybe a lifetime. Oh yes, I don't think you ever get over that. That uh, was Phil Pendleton reporting. Knott County's judge executive says if not for outside help, there is no way the county would have been able to recover from the numerous losses they incurred. Evans in next with the forecast. WYMT News. It's uh, definitely a hot one, but I'm glad it's dry for all the things going on across the region from the North Fork Music Festival mm -hmm. to the event Olivia's at in Knott mm -hmm. County. A lot of things happening tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We did have a few storms move through earlier, but it was mostly north of where most of the flooding took place and where a lot of the memorials are this evening. So mm -hmm. lucked out there. The only issue is it is still very hot. Many heat, ind heat indices throughout the region above 100 degrees. So plenty of water, light, loose fitting clothing as you head out there. So, yep. you know, just Take those heat precautions and uh, we'll be okay. You can yeah. check those out at our website, by the way, wymt.com slash weather. And 
So far, so good weather-wise today. We had some of those storms earlier. You still see several severe thunderstorms just to our south and east in the portions of southwestern and southern Virginia. Had a few of those in the portions of West Virginia earlier. Even had a severe thunderstorm warning over in Wolf County, knocking down a few trees. But so far, we haven't heard of any huge reports of damage from those uh, issues there. You see that uh, whole complex pushing off to the east and not much else going on throughout the region. So I think we're in pretty good shape as we head through much of the rest of the evening. Low to mid out there as we head through tonight. You see future view brings more storms in here. I don't think so. They're just not there. Quite frankly, they haven't developed. So I think a lot of us stay dry through the evening though we could watch a few more storms work in overnight. We're in the mid 70s to near 80 in the morning depending on uh, if you don't see storms. If you do, we're down into the uh, low to mid 60s out there as we head through the morning. A few more storms will be possible as we head into tomorrow. We've shown this graphic several times because the numbers are frankly somewhat incredible. 95 daytime high tomorrow with the spotty storm chances. But look at the heat indices. 105 by early afternoon, topping out near 110. So it wouldn't shock me if that if that heat advisory gets extended into the day tomorrow because we're still dealing with highs, middle and upper 90s or middle and upper 80s to near 90 with those heat indices near 100. And future view continues to show the potential for more storms developing over central Kentucky tomorrow afternoon and diving through the region tomorrow evening. I think this model is a little overzealous with the possibility for storms, quite frankly. I think we all have that possibility, but the best chance is going to be tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night. Mid 60s to start our day on Sunday. A few more downpours work through, but we're finally quieting down, calming down, drying out a little bit. Look at this. This is a treat with low temperatures in the low 60s. Temperature trends staying up there. 95 tomorrow, but back into the upper 80s through the rest of the week on that community or that Kentucky Farm Bureau seven day forecast where your weekend is always in view. Mid 80s continue Sunday into Monday back in the upper 80s on Tuesday. We do try to work some more storms back in here, though, as we head toward Thursday and Friday with high temperatures back near 90. Something we'll continue to watch. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. On this day in history, going way back to July 28, 1945, an Army B-25 bomber crashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building, killing the three passengers aboard the plane and 11 people in the building. The aircraft was flying from Bedford, Massachusetts to Newark, New Jersey when it hit the New York City landmark. Witnesses reported the plane was weaving through midtown Manhattan in heavy fog before it hit the building. Coming up in sports, it was high school football media day at Boyd County High School. Nate Johnson has more from the... WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. It was a different look for the Bengals today at camp with no Joe Burrow. Quarterbacks Jake Browning and Trevor Simon took some snaps and threw it around today at practice. But despite Joe's absence, this team knows what they are capable of this season, the potential they have, and they are fired up with it all starting with their main man, Mr. Burrow. Yeah, man, we are very ready. I think this is a very motivated group. Uh, obviously, starting with Joe, man, and, and his mindset and approach, um, you know, and, and then from there, it just kind of trickles on down into each room. And, uh, man, it's a very motivated group. I feel like, you know, Coach Taylor knows that. I mean, that's everybody's goal on this team, you know what I'm saying, to get back to where we left off and, you know, pick up and hopefully bring one of the trophies home soon. These guys are in the starting box ready to fire out. And that's just the sense you get around being around these guys is they're just, they're ready. Um, you've really felt that since the spring. Joey Bose made that comment to me a couple times during OTAs, leading into summer break. These guys want to start going now, you know, and, and start playing these games. And um, you don't take that for granted because that, that that's not always the case, you know, in the years I've coached, you don't always feel that. And this is one of those years I, I certainly feel like these guys are ready to go. Taylor and the Bengals are not the only ones ready to get football season underway. Eastern Kentucky high school players are as well. Boyd County High School hosted several Eastern Kentucky football programs for Media Day today to discuss their game plans for this season. And with the emphasis changing from a run game to the passing game for the world of football, some Mountain teams are sticking to their tradition and some are mixing it up. It's just a new wave of football. I mean, you can only run the ball so much, and we got a lot of guys that are athletic enough to go out there and catch it, and so this year we're just going to spread it out a little bit more and be able to pass the ball. The heart of our team is running the ball. That's, uh, that's really where we excel. 
Uh, I think just a couple seasons ago, we were top 10 in the nation with rushing. So uh, that's, we're going to keep that. We're going to keep rushing the ball. Uh. That is sports. We'll be right back.